consumer news tonight when it comes to meat. The USDA seal is required to prove that the meat has been inspected by a federal agency. But what many consumers may not know is that some meat has actually been treated with carbon monoxide gas in order to keep it looking fresh for weeks. Kitty Pilgrim has more. Red fresh meat, or is it? Congressional hearings pointed to the pitfalls of treating meat with carbon monoxide. Treating meat with carbon monoxide allows the meat to keep its freshly ground red color, even though the meat may have spoiled. I have a picture on the screen. There's two packages of ground meat that were left out at room temperature for 27 hours. You can see the one which was treated with carbon monoxide looks fresh and red, while the other meat has turned brown and quite nasty looking. Congressman Stupak and Congressman Ed Markey have introduced legislation that would require meat treated with carbon monoxide to be labeled so the consumer would know. According to the industry, two-thirds of all meat and chicken is no longer cut by a butcher in front of customers or in back of the supermarket case. Now, pre-packaged, case-ready meat is prepared off-site at large distributors and then shipped to supermarkets. The carbon monoxide treatment keeps meat looking fresh in that process. Food experts say a pound of ground beef cut by a butcher goes brown in four to five days. But meat treated with carbon monoxide by a meat packer can stay looking fresh for weeks. It's the same with imported seafood. Congressman Stupak says his subcommittee tested seafood from China and Vietnam treated with carbon monoxide. 20% turned out to be bad and was refused. It's a problem because consumers aren't informed about how meat is treated. The meat is being treated with chemicals so that it's going to look like it's fresher than it is. I think consumers have a right to know how fresh their meat is. Industry representatives of large meat packers say the additive is harmless and it's easy to tell when the product goes bad. Kitty Pilgrim. Save our planet. Global shift to vegan diet would reduce emissions and mitigate costs 80%. Governments worldwide are challenged with the task of reducing greenhouse gas emissions that cause global warming. The Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency analyzes and makes recommendations for Dutch and international policy for environmental sustainability. In February, researchers issued a proposal involving a dietary change that would also reduce the cost of mitigating global warming. Department Director Dr. Joop Ouder Lohos said in a phone interview that this study was one of a growing number being conducted in Europe. We are now at the point that um, science has more and better numbers on the effects of uh, changing the diet and eating less meat. Um, so there's more consensus on that side if you look at the, the total picture of the chain. Uh, it did lead to uh, several heavy discussions in uh, Germany, in the Netherlands, some in Belgium and in the UK. The Netherlands study entitled Climate Benefits of Changing Diet analyzed the entire chain of animal raising activities from field to fork. It calculated the monetary cost of halting climate change, which was defined as stabilizing atmospheric CO2 at the level of 450 parts per million. The report concluded that 20 trillion US dollars, or 50% of a total 40 trillion US dollars estimated cost, could be saved from the global shift to a low meat diet. What would happen in the case of a vegetarian or vegan diet? If you would go for a completely uh, meatless diet in the next uh, 10 to 15 years, then in the year 2050, you would have a 70% reduction of uh, uh, attaining the climate goals. That's a substantial cost reduction in getting to the uh, same climate targets. Going even further, the researchers found that a completely vegan diet with no animal products would save an enormous 80% by 2050. What's more, another benefit was discovered. Because plant-based diets produce much more food for humans than meat and dairy-based diets, some of the land not used to grow livestock could be turned back into carbon-absorbing forests, which are known to help reduce CO2 emissions. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, March 16th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com. That's and on YouTube, DDarko2012 and DDarko2013. All the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. Thank you for joining me, everyone.
So I decided to go with the uh, the meat or beef uh, issue here because I covered it on Wednesday and it was based off um, the eugenicist, the bioethicist talking about creating a pill so that people would not crave meat anymore. And I think a lot of us understand or are aware that this, this is part of the, uh, the kind of the climate change um, fraud. It's also part of social engineering. And I'm sure there's many reasons for it. I'm not positive on all of them. But the reason, of course, like you saw, was that it's going um, it's going to help with climate change. I mean, that's what we saw in this in this video. Stop global warming climate change by eighty percent with plant-based diet. And it, goes, and it makes the case that basically you can help the the planet from climate change by uh, reducing or all the way uh, re uh, eliminating meat from your diet. And it says the savings, the savings. Well, what are the savings? Well, they're talking about um, the savings as far as carbon credits. I mean, ultimately, that's what they're talking about. I mean, they're talking about saving the environment, but it's all about what? Sustainability, which means eugenics, which means population control, which means population reduction, which means less people. Um, ultimately, but uh, you know, you have to look at the programming icons that are that are doing this. I mean, Lady Gaga. I just saw like, is she vegan or is she vegetarian? Oh, she's vegetarian. Well, she's not even. She's neither. Um, I guess she was actually doing it uh, to say her, her reason for that was, well, I have no rights at all, and you know, uh, and, and so this is why I'm doing it. And there was no real reason for it. I think she was just doing it to piss people off, also to incite uh, certain things as far as um, cannibalism and that, because that's what the that's what the New World Order is promoting, um, uh, di different forces of sexuality, and then you have um, sleeping with dead people, including that, uh, vampir uh, vampirism, all kinds of weird stuff that comes out um, of the social engineering. And that's what I can't stand about this woman as she's holding a little flame Lucifer torch right there. She always acts like as if she's some innocent bystander or something like that, and that it's art. Um, well, I actually came across a story that, that said that uh, there was actually a Lady Gaga fan that uh, in Oklahoma that killed and mutilated her cat uh, prior to a concert. And then we saw in this video where she's talking to Oprah, she said that what? Oh, she was actually like that it, that it didn't smell good because what? She, then she didn't have to talk to people because she hates celebrities, right? So then you have these programming icons, Jay-Z and Beyonce. They've gone partially vegan since pregnancy. So here's the articles. You can go in there. Links will be posted. I covered this on Wednesday. Update Australia's dietary guidelines to consider sustainability. Talking about re reducing your meat consumption. Here's the other article. Fight global warming by using genetic engineering to birth smaller children and create little uh, smaller eyes like cats uh, due to the sunlight. It says here, uh, more red meat, more mortality. So eating red meat is associated with sharply increased risk of death from cancer and heart disease, blah, blah, blah. So we all know that uh, that actually eating, just reducing the amount of food that you eat com uh, all the way. I remember um, reading about this from a doctor uh, was that you'll actually increase your lifespan just by, re by reducing food altogether. So... But as far as meat goes, I'm not I'm not uh, vilifying meat eaters or vegetarians. I've been both a vegetarian and a meat eater, but it's just kind of timely, right? Because everything's really very timely, right? Uh, as far as pushing agendas in March 12, 2012, we're seeing this all over the news right now. You have Prince Charles telling America to cut down on steaks while they have their own Angus beef farm for themselves. So there, this is being for the hoopals and for the programming icons to pro promote it, but they themselves are not going to do this. Uh, nutritional McCarthyism, the red meat, uh, red meat to blame for death, global warming, to tsunamis, mine collapses, and terrorist attacks. Red meat is probably the cause behind the Congo train derailment and the uh, Yaxi River dolphin extinctions too. So the Lou Rockwell uh, blog doesn't uh, tie this issue in with uh, global warming and eugenics and all that stuff. But it does attack the uh, the theory of it, right? Or the science, just like in global warming, we know that what uh, that most of the actual uh, greenhouse gases are water vapor, and um, uh, you know cows and that is about five percent of total greenhouse gases, the the methane. But that the temperature drives CO two levels, and it's not that CO two levels. Uh, drive temperature. So they go in there and they attack the science and they say saying that it's an observational study and the end result is an association. An association by itself contains no causal information. So uh, you go in there and check that out.
But they're going to replace it with what? They're going to replace it with lab-grown meat, meat grown in a lab. They've already done that. I think it was in that the same countries, uh, Scandinavian countries, and then uh, uh, meat made out of crap. They did that in Japan. And this is we've seen this in movies, right? We've seen this in movies like uh, with Space Odyssey and that, with just synthetic foods and that. So we'll segue into this. Defending Pink Slime Company insists product is kid safe, even as parents petition against it. And they were just going to throw this in there. They were just going to throw it in there, not say anything, but there was an outcry of, about it after you know McDonald's uh, was caught uh, using it, and then they got rid of it. But then they're going to put it in school lunches. It says pink, and then here's damage control. Pink slime sounds gross. But how does it taste? So it may taste good. You know, everybody's bashing it, but hey, maybe it'll taste good. Let's not let's not even worry about it uh, being ammonia, right? It says here, schools will opt out of the pink slime beef. School districts soon will be able to opt out of a common ammonia-treated ground beef filler. Critics have dubbed pink slime. So it wasn't that it was going to be added. It was just... It just became uh, known in the social media, and it says there was a swarm growing social media storm, right? Well, they've already been putting it in there for uh, for several years, and now they're just going to have the option of opting out. And you can go in here and read some of this double speak in there. It'll make your your uh, your head twist, your brain twist when you start reading this stuff about what it is and what it isn't. So there's a good chance that this stuff, the only reason people signed an online petition and that to get rid of it was because what? Because they became aware of it. They probably didn't even know it was in there, like um, like the uh, carbon monoxide being sprayed in meat. They just didn't know. If they knew, like GMO, then they wouldn't, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't use it. They wouldn't take it. They wouldn't buy it. They wouldn't stand for it, right? So they probably, they put, oh, we're going to, uh, you're going to have an option to opt out. Opt out of what? What are you talking about? Pink slime? Oh, pink slime's in our school lunch? Oh, yeah, you didn't know that? We've been doing it for years. So then they're like, no, we want it out of there. And now, then that's why they put this other stuff. Pink slime sounds gross, but how does it taste? You know, trying to say, well, maybe it's not that bad. So you remember this article, uh, can lure of driver's license keep kids in school? I covered this on Wednesday. Uh, basically kind of like, you know, you better uh, you better stay in school in the re-education camp and get brainwashed and indoctrinated. Otherwise, you won't be able to drive your shitty job, right? So... Then what? Cultivating tobacco harmful to farm kids. So labor secretary under farm under fire for overbroad regulations. Remember when I said, I mean, what would they do in the 1800s? You can't ride your horse because you didn't go to school. Well, most of them didn't even go to school. If they were, they were homeschooled. So, but just saying that it's, it's just as ridiculous as like someone holding a, you know, having a gun to have a registered and permit is having a spear or a wooden stick. You got to register that spear, that wooden stick. You know, it's just, it's the same, it's the same mentality. So with horses, you know, saying that you got to have a license uh, to ride a horse, well, they wouldn't do that. People wouldn't stand for it. So now it says here, because they're going to put pink, they have pink slime in schools and stuff like that, and they care so much about your health, cultivating tobacco harmful to farm kids. So they now they care about their health. It's the Obama regime's proposed regulations that would curtail what chores children are allowed to do on their farm operating almost all power-driven equipment includes uh, one of those restrictions. It's kind of like in a grocery store where you, you could be working at a grocery store and you have to use, you have to bail cardboard, but you have to get someone that's 18 in order to do it. And you're like 16 driving a car, yet you can't use the bailer for cardboard, right? So the thing is, they treat you like children and, and adults, they treat them like children, but yet they want to make children grow up real fast, right? Well, grow up real fast, right? Um, teaching them sex ed and all that in preschool and kindergarten. Look at this. It says uh, the Supreme Court is going to weigh uh, life sentences for minors. There's more propaganda. Should your child be spanked at school? Well, they shouldn't uh, be sent to the re-education camps. You don't have that problem. Yeah, the president of Sweden's Home Education Association, who had to flee from the country after continuing pers persecution from Swedish authorities over homeschooling. So. But it's all about removing your children from the family, off the farm, and into the social engineer's hands. Thank you.